Hi, welcome everybody. This is Dan Powers with Beyond the Bedroom and another episode of Naked Talk. Uh, Naked Talk is where we get naked in a conversation of sexuality, intimacy, and relationship. We strip down and expose the bare facts so you can learn what it takes for your love to thrive. This week we've got a special guest and we're very excited to have him on. Uh, his name is Steve Steinberg and he's with Soul Healing. He's going to be here tonight talking to us about erotic reflexology. And uh, I don't know if you've heard of erotic reflexology or not, or even if you've ever heard of reflexology. Uh, I've done a little bit of studying on it myself, not a lot. Uh, so I'm excited to hear what Steve has to say and kind of fill us in about on it a little bit. The other thing we're looking excited or we're excited about is Steve will be here in a couple weeks. Uh, to do a workshop. We're doing one in Denver on September 20th and another one on September 21st here in Boulder. Uh, if you're interested in that, uh, we encourage you to sign up. But let's go ahead and bring Steve Steinberg in. Um, but let's just go ahead and get right into it, Steve. So tell us a little bit about you and Soul Healing. Okay. Uh, for those of you who hopefully you can hear me, we again apologize for the delay. But let me share with you where I'm coming from as a certified reflexologist. Uh, my business is called Soul Healing, as you can imagine, being spelled S-O-L-E. It's a little play on words, referring to a lot of reflexology is actually done on the feet, but as well as hands and ears, theoretically. So the erotic zones could be hit in a few different areas. But I, used, I chose Soul Healing for the simple reason that most people connect reflexology with their feet. And I've been doing this my ninth year of doing this and uh, I love doing it. I love teaching people how to do it. And uh, that's what the workshop's gonna be all about is to show you how you could do this for each other and really become closer in many different ways that uh, if you've already there, we just simply take you to the next level. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about the history of reflexology. What, where does it come from? Good question. The reflexology term itself is really not that old. Uh, it's only from the 1930s. Uh, but the actual history of reflexology goes back thousands of years. Matter of fact, it predates any mo modality you know holistically, such as acupuncture. A lot of people confuse uh, this modality as being actually Chinese, and acupuncture is actually Chinese, but reflexology is like the mother of acupuncture because it actually was uh, discovered a thousand years earlier approximately 2300 BC. Uh, actually, uh, they saw writings uh, on tombs in Egypt of them doing each other's feet. And they truly believe that when they did each other's feet, it wasn't just for health, but it was kind of like their version of what they would call foreplay. Uh, mm -hmm. So they would get people nice and relaxed after building all those pyramids and whatnot, and they could uh, continue uh, enjoying each other's company and the drawing of doing their feet was just a precursor of going a little bit further. Mm -hmm. So that, uh, from over time, uh, eventually got passed on to one country to another. About a thousand years later, when the Chinese had a hold of it, they developed acupuncture from it by uh, then including using the needles. So mm -hmm. the history is quite, quite old. Uh, hundreds and hundreds of years ago, books were written about it. Back then, let's see, I'm thinking about it's close to eight, nine, eight, uh, 900 years roughly, they called it zone therapy. And uh, it took till the 19, early 30s uh, that they recall or they made the name reflexology, which was kind of coined, and then that became the phrase that we call it today. My understanding of reflexology uh, is what I've learned from the Taoist work. I've uh, read some of the books from Montauk Chia. They, I think it was uh, sexual reflexology. And one of the things they talk about is that there's the different zones on every one of the appendages that apply to a different organ in the body. Is, can you tell us a little bit more about that? And yeah, that we, true? Yes, um, it, to some extent, the best way to really describe it, and at the workshop I'll have the uh, chart to show people of what the feet look like when you chart it out, meaning that one area of the foot shows the heart, or heart area or chest or stomach or kidney or liver or neck, back, every part you can imagine is listed on the chart. What that's referring to is really dealing with your nerves. You have over 7,000 nerves in your body. 
Your nerve's job mm -hmm. is simply to communicate from that area of the body back to the brain so the brain knows what to do to adjust or fix, repair, whatever it needs to be doing to make you better. Uh, everyone kind of connects us with a health issue, and it doesn't have to be necessarily a health problem. It could simply be you have so much stress. You have a lot of you know, things you're trying to get done, and you're running out of energy, so you're just uh, depleted in that. Reflexology is going to not only make you better in that respect, but it's also going to increase your energy, reduce that stress, so that you can deal with your day-to-day -day life. It's keeping the body in balance. Now, how that works is that nerve that we were just talking about, where it ends in your feet, Mm -hmm. The job of the body, of the heart, is to pump the blood throughout your whole body to get toxins out of your body. What I mean by toxins is nothing more than simply the body's waste product. You are eventually going to urinate it out. But over time, as we age a little bit, and we're still all very young here, so I'll exclude this audience right now, but mm -hmm. as you get older, that toxin buildup will prevent the communication of that nerve back to the brain because the toxins will build up at the end of the nerve endings where your hands and your feet are. When people talk about the extremities, that's the reason why. The toxins are still in the body. You might notice in the wintertime, your feet or hands get colder faster because mm -hmm. of that lack of circulation. Well, the translation of that is if the brain does not get the message from the nerve to repair something, it won't. It doesn't know that you have, let's call it a backache, and your back's hurting you. You know it, but your brain doesn't. So when we do reflexology, we're doing a pumping action, which you'll, again, learn in the class. That's going to clear that area of those toxins. And then the nerve can communicate back to the brain to now say, oh, wow, we have a problem with the lower back now. Let's fix it. And okay. That's where they, and that's where they'll send the white blood cells and whatnot and all those things to, to fix it. And that's okay. pretty much how reflexology works. So when you say pumping, what are you, talk, what are you talking about with that? Well, um, um, I can't see myself here. I hope you see my thumb. Yep. Okay, so I'm, I'm moving it like this, and when that's applied on the hand or the foot, I uh, hope you see that, yep. um, you're going to feel kind of like a pumping action, whereas okay. a massage therapist is going to be rubbing the hands and feet, and that still feels good, but when you do this to the body, and I'm going to turn it this way, it's probably even better, um, it, you'll feel the pressure of what I'm doing, which is the, why they call this a moving acupressure. It okay. feels wonderful, and when you stimulate the different areas, it can feel good. And then in the classes where I'm going to show you where to stimulate all parts of the body. Okay, so not just the feet. Are we going to look at other areas? Well, through the feet, we're going to hit all the areas. So we're okay. going to be specific on all the different parts of the feet of what they represent, meaning that's where the nerve ending of that area is in your foot. And so tell us a little bit about yourself. How did you learn this, and how did you get into it? Yeah, well, quite interesting. Uh, uh, if you back up so many years, uh, for 25 years, I was actually an insurance agent, a family agency, sold insurance, was doing fine, and I knew in the back of my mind one day I might change careers. And uh, just prior to that happening, I was with a friend, and we were walking along this path. It was early summer. Uh, getting a little tired, her feet were hurting, we sat down on a bench, she put her feet up on my lap, started hitting areas that I guess it might have affected the, the erogenous zones, but as I was doing it, she quickly said to me, you would make a great reflexologist. At that moment, that's the first time I even heard the term reflexology itself, other than the term reflexologist was the person who does reflexology. Mm -hmm. So I didn't really think much of it at that moment. A couple weeks later, I received uh, you, you ever at home when you get those things in your driveway that has coupons from the local grocery stores? I yep. pulled one. It happened to be one of those days it didn't rain because if it rains, I throw it away. It's too wet. I happened to look at that one, and there was a little ad in there about a hands-on demonstration of reflexology. Since I had just heard that term, it kind of caught my attention. Um, I called. I decided I wanted to go take that class. I went to take that class, and through that class, I started the interest. The instructor who had taught me ran that class, and she said at the end to me that she sees me doing this down the road. I went, okay, and I just figured she said that to everybody else. About two and a half years later, and within those two and a half years, she opened up a school, which is the one I enrolled with, which I had uh, called her because I was now in the midst of that career change. And I remember the conversation, and I remember the class, so I called her. She was all excited. She told me she knew I would be back, uh, and I enrolled in the class, which is about a week later. At the end of that day, which was a nine-hour day, I knew this was what I was meant to do. So it was a long process, but uh, 
it's been a wonderful thing to do and seeing people react to it and see get relief and feel better and feel really good and help their partner uh, in, in all kinds of ways of life has been really generally rewarding to me. How are you doing your business today then? Um, I do it a number of ways actually. Um, most practitioners out there, whether it's reflexology or massage or acupuncturist, they generally just have an office and that office could be at some other location or at their home and just through word of mouth and telling other people come and have this modality done. I knew from the get-go that wasn't a way to make a career out of this. I wanted to bring it literally to people and to do that I did it numerous ways. Obviously one could be simply workshops like we're going to do it in Colorado in a couple right. weeks but another way of doing it is we go to where people work because it, like I said earlier it reduces stress, increases energy makes uh, from, a, from a work environment uh, people more productive and more creative at work. So I've approached companies where we bring this and our, and our chairs will be there in Colorado. We take those chairs directly to work sites and people can sign up and we set up where there's like half hour sessions for it. A true session by the way is the full hour in case someone's thinking about that right now how, far, how much is the session as far as time wise. Uh, but at work you can still do a half an hour and get a lot done. So when we bring it to work we have an environment of maybe doing you know, 15, 20, 30, 40 people. We can bring in more practitioners to do that. And it's a regular program, once a minimum of once a month. Uh, so in that environment, people want to work, can I do it? And let's face it, when people are working and they're done for the day, they have to deal with getting home, dealing with dinner, going shopping, pick up the kids, dealing with their spouse, dealing with their parents, uh, on and on and on. Sometimes you, you miss doing things because you just don't have the time. So by creating an environment, doing where people work, is a way to have it done uh, at work, make them feel better, do better at work so the, the boss is happy, the employee is happy, uh, everyone really gets uh, benefits out of that. Speaking of benefits, we're now finding some insurance companies are now uh, allowing benefits with reflexology and when that happens it ends up being obviously free uh, for the uh, employees to get done. Separate nice. from that, we, we work with uh, large corporations uh, even medium corporations, if they go to conferences and trade shows, if you ever attend to them, you're probably familiar with the idea of just walking around for almost, it seems like, miles and miles, stopping at all these different booths and being bombarded with these salespeople about selling their particular service or product. So I've approached a number of exhibitors to say, hey, hire us to be at your booth, create this relaxation environment so it encourages people to stop by and stay there. The result is we increase their face time. And that allows them to sell their service or product, and they get a, a return of investment. The ROI goes up because they had us there to relax. We've been told by many play, uh, attendees at events, this is the best booth here. You go by and you just see six, seven people laying in those chairs getting their feet done. It really nice. draws attention. Nice. So between that, parties, girls' night out parties, we've done weddings, uh, we've done mm -hmm. grand openings at businesses. It's just something a little bit different, again, thinking that old standard line of thinking outside the box. Of where people are, there's going to be a need for relaxation. Wherever you are, you're standing up doing whatever you're doing, and after a while, you just get tired. And right. this can help change that. Nice. So how do you address some of the, the comments? I assume you get comments about, well, this is just kind of woo-woo stuff. I mean, I know for acupuncture, there's a lot of people that don't have any kind of belief in that, although the Chinese have believed in it for a long time. Even the communist government there believes in in acupuncture and it's just in the West now starting to come around a little bit more where even doctors are starting to admit oh yeah this is probably something that's viable. Well that last part you mentioned is kind of a way that, that it's getting be known in the environment that it is okay because you gotta remember with medical background with doctors they don't study holistic methods that's not part of the medical environment. So it's not simply that they don't believe in it as far as medical doctors, they just don't know anything about it. But there have been a few that have now gone out when their own health has been an issue and they've met with reflexologists or massage therapists or chiropractors or acupuncturists and have seen results themselves. So the environment is starting to change where uh, they're working with each other. Uh, I've worked with uh, podiatrists, I've worked with chiropractors, I've worked with some um, medical doctors that think again a little bit outside that box and realize when they've had it done themselves, it's made a difference. The problem is you're dealing with the medical field and with the 
pharmaceutical companies that don't want to deal with this because they make no money from it. You have to deal right. with that kind of logic that goes on. But separate from the medical field helping out, um, you're right. I've had people like, oh, I don't think I believe in this. This is energy medicine, so to speak. And energy medicine comes in all forms. And some of them, you need to kind of have a belief. And in this particular one, it's not about a belief at all. It's not a religious type of thing. Uh, when I work on somebody, or any reflexologist works on somebody, they're getting those toxins out of the system whether the recipient wants to believe it or not. Once they actually get it done, and I've had many a people in my chair that took it hesitantly to get in the chair, but when they were done, they're like, oh my God, I'm feeling the difference. And nice. then once they tell others, it really spreads. It's taking a while. The uh, last statistic I show that about 4% of the population has ever tried reflexology. So yeah. it's kind of an uphill battle to teach the other 96% on what it is. The most common uh, thought that people have about it is that they think, oh my gosh, your hands on my feet, that's going to be extremely ticklish. Uh, <laughs> not that many people are ticklish, but everyone that is, that's what they're thinking. So right. when, you, when you apply moving pressure on the body, it's a non-ticklish sensation. It's just that the average person who's ticklish does not know that. So it takes a little bit of a, uh, an art on my part to show them that it's not ticklish because they have to build the trust in me to try it. And I do have a right. little form of how I do that. I simply tell them, give me, uh, first I give, I take their hand. I say, can I borrow your hand? And they're, they're not reluctant to do that. And I do what I just showed you before on the hand like this. And they realize, oh, that doesn't tickle, but it probably will my feet. And I say, well, however it feels in your hand right now, it's exactly how it's going to feel in your feet. So just right. give me 30 seconds, not even a minute. Give me 30 seconds to get in the chair to show you that. I know you don't believe it yet, but just give me 30 seconds. I'd say... 60%, 70% take me up on that offer. 100% of them that did never got out of the chair. So is there any scientific evidence for any of this, or is it all just uh, through feeling at this point? No, there has been scientific evidence that's been done. Those reports are, you can Google up online. Uh, there's a, a, a reflexologist who's been doing it much longer than me uh, by the name of Kevin Kuntz. He's done many studies. So you can look him up online. He publishes out reports of, met, of actual scientific studies about it that prove mm -hmm. what it's done for people. There, I don't recall the reflexologist's name. He was actually not in, I think he was in the medical field, and he came down with stage four cancer and came across reflexology and totally recovered from it. He believed it was through that reflexology and other modalities he was taking that allowed his body to clear itself. So wow. he's written books on it. I don't recall the guy, the, the gentleman's name, but those are in those different reports showing what, what's out there and how it's been applied and how it works. It's just that in modern age of modern medicine, people have forgotten what did we do centuries ago to get yeah. the body well. The advantage of, of course, centuries ago, so when we go back to ancient Egypt, they didn't have a McDonald's down the corner. So well, they, they didn't have big pharma either. Right. So they, they ate well, um, but still, and they also lived longer. Uh, and there had to be a reason for it. So they, they truly know from looking at history, looking at the reports, there's quite a number of holistic methods that work to make the body better. If everyone looks at, the one thing you see in common, it's about these herbs and plants and all these things that we have on this earth for, for obviously since the earth's been around. Uh, the belief is it's here for a reason. Uh, and whether you have a belief in God or you don't have a belief in God, those things exist. And the question is, why do they exist? It's easy to sit here and say these things exist. It's just coincidental or it's accidental. Uh, but my thought personally is that things are here for a reason. Things happen for a reason. So yeah. when you apply that and you put the, that in a holistic field, you're seeing positive results. Wow, so that sounds like it's going to be really fun. So in the class that you're going to be teaching for us, describe that a little bit. What are we going to be doing? Well, the idea is um, I, I'm kind of thinking of a little funny thing moment here because a number of times I've done this class before. Uh, what I like about your environment, you're dealing with a lot of people who want to get better with relationships already. They, No matter how wonderful it is, they know, let's take it to the next level. Let's take it to the next level. Unfortunately, a lot of people in this world don't know that yet. So I won't have that issue with yours. So when I've done this class in the past, it's usually the wife or the girlfriend dragging the boyfriend or the husband to the event because she really wants to do it and he's extremely reluctant. Yeah, um, and, I don't and, believe in any of that woo-woo crap. Yeah, or yeah we'll do a woo-woo where I don't want to do touchy-feely <laughs> things in front of other people and whatever you want to call it. But 
it's still my wife or still my girlfriend. I got to please her. It's Valentine's Day, whatever it is. <laughs> they, they, they literally are dragging them to the event. But yeah. this is where I take advantage of it. You and me alike, one thing we have in co common is we have testosterone. And testosterone can do amazing things. You put a bunch of men together who are reluctantly want to be there, and you line them up and they start to rub their girlfriends or, or wives' feet. The one thing that's going in their mind, they don't want to be the worst one here. So, yeah. So they want to be the least better than the guy next to them. Um, <laughs> so it ends up with a little bit of competition kicks in, which makes that barrier go away, and they really get into it. And, and the goal for those kind of couples is that by the time we're done, when they go back home, when she's already sitting at the uh, on the sofa watching TV or reading a, a book or on the internet, and he's watching the uh, ESPN special game of the week, he then sees and remembers the class, hey, honey, let me do your feet. She faints, he picks her up, puts her on the sofa and starts rubbing her feet, <laughs> and, the, and the relationship begins. Uh, the advantage, I think, of this particular event here is they already know they want to take the next step. Yeah, right. So they're going to be coming to class. It is for couples, but if they're single, can they show up as well? Sure, as long as they're comfortable touching another single, uh, it works okay. very well. They're simply touching their feet. I'll give them step-by-step -step instructions on what to do. We'll have demonstrations. Laura, who will be with me, will be able to show together how to hold your hands and how to position it. Uh, it's a very simple method. I want people to think, oh, my God, they have to know everything. They just need to know some simple steps that we'll be able to show them. When they start doing it, it will they'll, the person who's getting it done obviously will be feeling the difference, and the one who's uh, doing it will be realizing, wow, look what I can do, make somebody feel good. So right. you'll be able to share that with whether it's your loved one or you're just selling with a, a friend. Uh, I've been at these events where I've, I've seen where women have brought their girlfriend along or their sister along, so they've done it for each other to then take it back to the spouse that they could not drag to the event. <laughs> uh, uh, but then when they go back, they end up doing it, um, we will offer a special deal at the class, by the way, because people then want to have a true full session of what that's going to be like. I believe mm -hmm. we allotted time for that after the class to that we'll have a special deal for them. We'll do reflexology for them so they can feel the full effect of how it works. We'll be able to do some one-on-one -on -one with everyone that they might have a particular issue that they're dealing with beyond just feeling good and trying to get each other excited that, gee, you know, my husband or boyfriend's been having really lower back problems. What can you do for us? And we'll be able to show them so they can do that at home so they can make them feel better. So those positions that you teach, they'll be able to get into those positions. Okay, so that's interesting. What kind of issues can can be resolved with this? Uh, you pretty much can fill in the blank. Uh, we get asked, asked all the time. When you think of the body simply as your nerves, like we talked about before, communicates to the brain to fix things, that's everything in your body. So if you have a toxin buildup in any particular part that's dealing with an issue you already have, and we clear it, it's going to make it better. Like I mentioned before, there's been people who've suffered with stage four cancer have gotten better from doing things like this. And you can have simple things like just a common cold or a headache that we can work on to make that go away almost instantaneously. So no matter how severe or mild of an issue it may be, it's just look, understanding the human body is just simply trying to communicate with itself, and that's what we're helping it do. Okay. So say I've got a migraine headache. How would you approach that? Um, what's well, just like that old thing, read the book, uh, you know, show up, and <laughs> show up at the seminar so we can show you, but I could give you a little bit about that. When you deal with the fingers or the toe areas, which is, they're, they're very common. Like if you take the feet and the hands and literally have them together, you would see the, the common where your fingers are is the same parts of where your toes are uh, from a reflexology standpoint. And then right. everything from this area up through the fingers or that area from your feet, from the toes up is basically everything from your neck up, which includes everything in your head. Well, where's your migraines? Up and there. So working in the toe areas is significant dealing with headaches, migraines, allergies, sinuses, uh, mm -hmm. uh, just things dealing inside your mouth. Um, it could be nosebleeds, uh, earaches, all of that's up in that area. And, and when we show that, it's, it's amazing how you look at the whole foot, that that part of the bottom of your toe up is representing like maybe 20% of the of the whole area, but think of how many issues we have from here up. Probably mm -hmm. more than probably more than twenty percent. So learning how to do the toes is very very significant. And there'll be some people who they don't want to touch the toes or whatever, but it is critical to learn it if you want to help with those particular issues. 
Unfortunately, from the sexual arousal area, it's further down towards the ankle area, which makes sense. So we'll show that at the class, go into obviously more specific detail on each little area and have generalized uh, areas to show that everyone could use uh, for working together as couples. And there'll be some individual things that deal with a particular couple or two that we'll work with individually as well. Okay, great. And so, yeah, the title of the class is erot Erotic Reflexology. Um, so, you know, one of the things that that kind of brings up for people is, is their nudity. Can you tell us about that a little bit? Oh, yeah, your feet get extremely naked. <laughs> That's so, what I, I When I tell people when they get in my chair, they sit down and they're so excited if they get to take their shoes and socks off, and I say, yep, we want naked feet for naked hands. Uh, so that's my, my method of doing it. Can it be done fully naked? By all means, obviously, if you're with someone you want to be naked with, by mm -hmm. all means, you can go ahead and do that. But again, we're working through the feet and the hands for the points that we touch from a reflexology standpoint. Uh, you will be hitting those areas in the body that have the, the G spot in this through the feet. And that's what we're going to uh, be able to focus on for a while so people can know, gee, what area do I touch to help that, that foreplay? And that's what we'll be able to show. So being naked in a general sense is just the feet and the, and the hands being naked. Uh, but if they want to get more comfortable, by all means, there's a method we'll show on the leg that we go up, the uh, which covers the sciatic area. Mm -hmm. If it's not your spouse you're working on, there's a certain point you go up to and then you come back. If it's your spouse, you want to go a little further, by all means. And we'll, right. and we'll, we'll show that in the class as well. Okay, great. Yeah, and then uh, somebody just asked, how does your methodology differ from traditional reflexology? Uh, she's received reflexology but had no erotic aspect to it. And I think it sounds like you've kind of addressed that question uh, partially as far as the erotic side of it. Uh, being the particular part of the foot that you would concentrate on. Uh, but can you answer a question as far as the methodology different from traditional reflexology? Or is this well, traditional reflexology? The term, ter the term traditional reflexology can be divided, or not divided, but shown that when it was first shown years ago, now let's keep in mind this was in Egypt and mm -hmm. obviously all through Asia. So they called it Eastern reflexology. And for centuries, all that was known was Eastern. It wasn't until the uh, early part, like in the 1920s and 30s, which is where they coined the, frame, coined the phrase reflexology, that they learned a little bit more, uh, probably even more into the 40s, I think it was, where they developed what they called Western style of reflexology. And let me uh, bring it down to real basics, not dealing from a necessary from an erotic standpoint. But when we talked about the nerves in the body and the toxin building up, well, the nerves in your body are just below the surface of the skin. Mm -hmm. And years ago, in the Eastern version of this, which we'll call traditional reflexology, they believed you had to go deep. It actually hurt to perform reflexology initially, kind of like a deep tissue massage. They went very deep, and they thought, you know, more no pain, no gain kind of approach. So like rolfing. Exactly. And they would use tools and whatnot to really go down and dig in. And when the person was done, oh, it hurt. But then the next day or two, okay, they started feeling better and maybe whatever pain they were dealing with went away. But when they realized it was about removing the toxins in the body, which again is at the end of the nerve endings, which is just below the surface of the skin, a light touch technically was all that was needed to make it better. Now let's think about it. Erotic, it's not about a heavy touch, it's that light touch that turns to people on. So you take that same light approach, apply it to reflexology to the points in the body that do have that erogenous zone and the G spots, now you're combining it together, removing the toxins, and at the same time, making someone feel really, really excited. So nice. all, we're really, all we're really doing is going to the areas in the feet where those areas are, because in the traditional way, they were just talking about getting away from pain. They weren't taking it beyond what it actually could do. So Western version really opened up the field to show, wait a minute, with this light touch, look what, look what else we could do. So it's just simply an awakening moment more than anything else. Sounds like what you're saying then is just by touching the feet, you're actually accessing the G-spot or the clitoris or something like that in you know, a person's body. Uh, are they going to feel aroused or you know, what kind of sensation? Everyone's going to probably uh, really react a little bit differently with that. There's mm -hmm. been people that they've been touched and they've even told me when they saw me with their husband was touching their feet that they did get climaxed and were mm -hmm. turned on. And then I asked, well, where did he touch you? And she pointed on her feet, and it was exactly where her, the, uh, the, those parts were. 
that he would touch without him even knowing, but it happened to work on her. Would it work on everybody? Not necessarily, but if you take the right environment, you put the people together and you learn to touch and you're, you know, whether you're having the, the, the liberations of, of drink or whatever with it and you, and you apply that touch, let's think about it. If somebody gives you a hug, it feels good. Mm -hmm. Well, that's simply the touch of one human to another. There is something that feels good. And once you can take that touch beyond with someone that you are that you love and they love you back, you can take it beyond just that feeling of, oh, that feels good. Simple right. touch of human touch is huge, even to a perfect stranger. So when you take it with someone that you love, you're simply like, wow, that feels good. And let's now pinpoint to the certain areas to get, make it go beyond that ah uh, moment. I guess it would be the oh moment. <laughs> The ah oh moment, yeah. Yep. Yes, <laughs> exactly. Yeah, you know, we just got done uh, teaching a class on sensuality and sexuality, and touch is such a huge part of our need as humans. I talked about how infants can't even survive if we're not getting touch, and how you know we've seen the infants in the incubators who weren't touched because they were prematurely born, and uh, just you know all the nightmares of that. And, and how sad it is in our society that we are a touch-starve world, really, right now. Uh, I've got a client recently that I've been working with, and we were talking about that, where you know, she, she's wanting touch, and so many of my clients come in and just want general touch. Uh, so it sounds like this reflexology is going to be a really nice uh, tool to put in my tool belt uh, as far as helping them to receive not only just touch, the actual physical touch, but something that will be able to help them out as well. Exactly. Um, I get uh, approached from some people that have come up to me and they've, they've had massage and then tell me, I don't like it so much, especially with a stranger touching me all over. And that's the mm -hmm. key word there, a stranger. Uh, you know, that's probably not normal that everyone in general wants to be touched that much. Um, but yet, you know, when you greet somebody, what do you do? You shake hands. So you're immediately touching someone that you just met to say that's our, our version in our human culture to say hello. And it's a, it's a touch motion right there. So when yep. I tell people with reflexology, if they have that, mm, I don't get a massage because I don't like to be touched, for some reason when you bring them down to the base of your body, down to your feet, and they simply take the shoes and socks off and they're just touching the feet, it's not so evasive to them. And all of a sudden they're not rubbing their shoulder and their back and near the butt and all those type of areas. Yet we are, because we know where the nerve endings in the feet. So just touching the feet is allowing them to go, okay, this is not so bad. I can handle this. Mm -hmm. um, I'll take you back to the moment when I first went to do this. I was just a student. I went to a health fair. And, and by the way, when I took that class, I was the only male doing it. It was 20 of us, 19 uh, women and myself. And we went to this health fair to finally practice on the public. It was just a health fair. And the people would come up, and I think uh, we just were charging like a dollar a minute. And my first, and I always thought, well, gee, am I going to have problems with strange women allowing me to touch them? And the first person that came up was actually a couple. It was a husband and wife, and she wanted to have it done. I think, all right, here we go. I'm going to have my test right now. Mm -hmm. She sat down. He sat in a chair literally right next to her with a newspaper. So while I was literally doing his wife, he was reading the paper, and he was fine. It took me five minutes to realize I'm going to have no problem getting this done. So how often should somebody come get a reflexology session with you? You have all the great questions. Uh, but fortunately, they've been asked of me a lot. So the first thing you got to determine is why are they taking a reflexology session to begin with? Um, if they're doing it because they happen to have an issue, and when I say an issue, it could be, let's say, their backache or they have a headache or whatever right. it may be that's been, uh, let's call it, uh, they've had it for a while. Uh, to have the session done once, I always tell them at least once a week. Reason is, and I'll use numbers in this particular case, how are you feeling with this condition? Obviously, you're not 100%. Give me a percentage. And let's say they said to me 50%. So whatever I did in that first session, if they literally waited a whole month to come back to me again, they'll be back to that 50%. So right. you don't want to wait that they keep just going up and up from 50 to 60 and 60 down to 50. So if you go the following week, we can build from that 50 that now feels like 60, the 60 can feel like 70. So for one person, maybe they need to go four or five times, another one, seven or eight, someone else maybe just two or three. I do it, I tell them to do it until it plateaus. So for your plateau, it could be from 50% to 80, 
someone else could be 50 to 90, someone else could be 50 to 100. Whenever that plateau hits, now maintain that once a month or four to six weeks is a kind of a, a range I give that. Um, if, we're com- if we create that health program for them and we're there once a month, which is why I try to create and make it once a month, once we get to that area where we've plateaued at, let's say, 90%, let's keep you at 90%. And the advantage of that is maybe that 90% is enough for them, ah, I'm not going to go and do that surgery. I don't really need it. The pain is really not that bad. So that's hopefully what's going to happen from that. Maybe they can cut down on medication that they're taking as well. So doctors re- are recognize that. And if they can see that they can get to their patients to cut down on the medication, a lot of doctors are, are not simply believing in that. They know it's better for their patient not to be on that medic- medicine all that time. So we're helping in that kind of environment as well. You're going to be teaching this class, and you mentioned a number, a couple times uh, a partner. Why don't you describe her a little bit for us? Uh, my better half. Uh, she's amazing. She takes the flair of it. I can describe it from a technical sense and explain all this. But she's that type of ooh, ooh, all excited thing where she can show how this goes beyond that. She deals with things beyond that where she deals with the oils and she deals with, um, oh, what's that called? It's like a pendulum, she, oh, the chakras. She helps uh, focus certain things on the chakras that opens up within the system. Uh, she, she's been with me now five years and has really helped me spread and make this bigger than I even imagined it myself. Laura is, is amazing with it. Um, she learned reflexology. Uh, by the way, when I had taken the course, I had become an instructor and taught it. So I taught Laura. And we then went to a, a course uh, at another state where she took that course as well. And she's she has a gift, just like mm-hmm. I it took me two years to believe I had a gift in doing this. She has a wonderful gift. So when we work together and show people what we can do, uh, I might be showing, especially if we have couples, we talked about before a man not wanting to be touched by another man or like feel like another human being touched them. When the two of us are together, we kind of avoid that problem. So this way, if he has an issue, she can do his feet and I can do her feet and they sit in two chairs next to each other, you know, literally uh, close enough that they hold hands while they get their feet done. And we'll do that actually at the, uh, in Colorado because we are having, uh, we do have two chairs there, right? I think. Yes. Yes. yes so uh, We'll have the two chairs together so they can have it done uh, next to each other uh, to appreciate that. Um, so she's been a, really a, a godsend to me. She says I'm a godsend to her. So we've made soul healing that much more powerful. And in a couple's soulmate workshop relationship, which is the original thing we have with it, now we take it to the point of uh, uh, erotic reflexology. We can show people and pinpoint how we're going to – she's going to be telling whether it's him or her, how, what can you do? to make her feel really good. And I could be saying to, to the female, what you can do to make him feel really good, beyond the obvious. And it's through the touch of the feet that's gonna make the difference. And our touch, which everyone will notice, they'll recognize as being really good, obviously because we're experienced at it, but I wanna avoid the one line from anyone so that the wife doesn't say to her husband, hey, you don't do as good as Steve. So <laughs> I want to avoid that issue from happening, that I teach them enough so they can do it for each other and make them feel better. And Laura it goes a long way in making me achieve that. Nice. Nice. Sounds good. So as class is coming up, what should people bring? What should people uh, look for? Well, first of all, just wear, wear very comfortable clothing. Um, you know, just, you know, it's not a dressed up affair. So just casual pants and top. Um, but more importantly, bring a pillow, and because uh, we're going to have the, the the seating capacity that when they're they're in front of you and their feet are towards you, rather than just flat on your lap, you'll get cramps. If you have that pillow down, uh, you'll be able to. And here I'm playing on my lap. You probably don't see it, but you put nope. that pillow down and you have the feet on top of uh, on on top of that. It will make it easier for you to uh, do the techniques that we're going to show you on how on on how to get reflexology done for your partner. So relax, relax, clothing and a pillow. And an attitude, a fun attitude where we're going to have a lot of fun. It's going to be uh, fun playing with each other. Uh, we'll uh, it's exactly what happens. They, they, <laughs> if we'll see what happens with this particular group. There is some things that we'll do uh, if the group is all for it because some people will claim they know their wives' feet very, very well. So we can always do the, the, the just give you a heads up now, that we can put the blindfold on them and have them three pairs of feet. One's their wife and two are not. So can can he really determine which ones really are his wife's feet? Hope it's not the next door neighbor's feet. So we'll see. 
It's like, oh yeah, these feet uh, feel really familiar. Really familiar, right? <laughs> Yeah, I tend, I tend to do that with groups that kind of know each other. People yeah. have hired us to come and we, we create a party environment and they might have, you know, 10 couples together, but they're all very good friends and it's a lot easier to perform that kind of uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. trick, so to speak. Right. All right, so is there any last little piece of information that we haven't talked about that you feel is important to impart to our audience? Just know by coming to this event, it's going to change how you deal with your partner for the rest of your life. You're going to be changed. Is that simple? And I mean changed for the better. So if you're thinking of doing this or you know you're doing this, do yourself a favor. You have a good friend, whether it's down the street, it could be your sister, it could be your brother, invite them to come along. We want to be able to spread and show people how they can share a relationship and improve their lives by a simple little thing of touching each other. And that's all, that's all it's going to be that we're showing you, but you're going to take it to the next level by doing this. So share it with others is my, probably the main thing to say to people. Great. Yeah, so we're, we're sharing this with our audience as well. I've talked to a number of people uh, from therapists to non-therapists. Uh, and when I say therapists, I'm talking about like psychotherapists that are interested right. in doing this. Uh, you know, it's interesting. We went to the ASEC conference back in last June, and they are so touch-averse that it was amazing. I uh, attended one class where a woman was talking about sensei-focused type of exercises, which is something that came from Masters of Johnson and stuff that we do in our surrogacy work. And they, she got to a point where the last 10 minutes she said, okay, I want to do an exercise. I've saved some time, and do you want to do it paired up or individually? And there was just at first a like a shock attitude or shock surprise tone that came from the audience like oh my god touch we're gonna touch somebody and then it was a you know almost a unanimous chorus of people that said individually individually we, we don't want to touch anybody else in here and it was it was hilarious and sad at the same time and yeah I understand that therapists have to uh, be very cautious about putting touch or using touch in their practices but I was thinking here at a professional conference, it would be great to be able to provide something like that. So I actually went over to a friend of mine who's a therapist, and we started touching and had a great time. But it was kind of interesting how people were looking at us, you know, kind of like high school. Like it's like, oh my God, they're touching. It's you know, what's wrong with that? But uh, uh, to expand upon that, when Laura and I are together, we've been at events, and somebody comes up and and. Uh, I would say 67% of the time it's women that will get it done over men, but never, nevertheless, men do get it done. But I can't tell me how many times a guy would come up and kind of be, maybe it's just the two of us, and I'm the next available chair, and go, can I wait for her, pointing to Laura? Uh, trust me, she's a lot better looking than I am. And, <laughs> and, and I understand it. I don't take it personally. It's just that his cultural background, which is a lot of human cultural backgrounds, they believe they want to be touched. The touch of being touched by the opposite sex is obviously very common. Uh, so he all of a sudden will sense that, well, if I'm going to get it done, I don't want a guy touching my feet kind of attitude. We'll get that. But once in a while, a guy will come up and you mind if I do it is what I'll ask. And, oh, yeah, I'm fine with that. Because the reason is, and I find out, he's had it done before. He might have been in Taiwan or in China or even in his own city, and he understands what reflexology was doing. He didn't take it from a sexual standpoint, so he was fine. So it's interesting how our culture is where those things develop that you, that you saw, the same thing that I see, that that touch can sometimes be affected whether it's a male or a female touching you. My joke is always that a guy is going to want the female majority of the time. I tell people that for a, for a woman that they'll let an aardvark do their feet. And just because they like touch no matter who's touching their feet, whether it's even human or not human. So everyone kind of laughs, but then they agree because the, the woman will say, yeah, I'll let anybody do my feet. Whereas a typical guy will kind of go, nah, can she do it for me? So yeah. it, it, works both, it works both ways. Yeah, great. All right, well, thanks, Steve. I appreciate it. And uh, you know, very excited, looking forward to having you out here in Colorado in a couple weeks. Uh, I hope everybody can attend. Uh, we're looking forward to it for sure. That was great. Looking forward to it myself. Yep. All right, so everybody, uh, 
I want to kind of bring you up to date on what's going on with Beyond the Bedroom. Uh, as you know, as you've heard from this uh, talk tonight, we have Steve Steinberg coming in town from Soul Healing and his partner Laura. They'll be here in Denver September 20th, that's a Saturday, uh, around the I-25 and Colorado Boulevard area. And then on Sunday, they'll be here in Boulder uh, in the North Boulder area. So if you don't want to travel to Denver, if you're from Boulder or vice versa, uh, then feel free to come to either one of those. We do have a limited amount of space, so if you'd like to sign up, uh, do so as quickly as possible. You can get access to that on our website, uh, beyondthebedroomevents.com, or more simply, bedevents.com. Also, would love to have you, if you like this, this episode or this show, Follow us on Facebook, like us on Facebook, uh, follow us on Twitter. On Facebook, you can follow us at facebook.com slash bed events, and that's the plural version of it. Uh, Twitter is bed event, uh, the singular version of it. There's somebody actually squatting on bed events, um, and I'm going to try to get that as soon as I can, uh, but for now, go to bed event. Uh, we also have a YouTube channel, uh, which is where this show will be aired uh, shortly after, uh, you know, probably tomorrow. Uh, where you'll be able to see the replay of this. Um, so uh, come check us out, see all the different things that we have to offer. Uh, we're continuously adding things. Uh, this month's face-to-face uh, -face meetup that we have, the fourth, is it fourth Tuesday of every month, uh, we have something we do at Brio Restaurant in Denver. And Elizabeth and I are going to be talking about shame. Uh, and the first part, it's actually a two-part thing, we're going to be talking about shame from a man's perspective, how men have been shamed in our society, how our partners are shaming them. So this is an event for women and men, uh, but the focus is going to be on men's shame for being who we are. And then in October, we'll be doing another face-to-face -face workshop on shame for women and what they've had to face and how men have shamed them, how society has shamed them, and how to kind of get through some of that. In addition, we've got some really exciting classes coming up in October that are TBA at this point in time, but uh, we've been talking to a number of people about doing uh, some erotic massage uh, stroking classes. Uh, we actually did a class, gosh, I think it was last year, uh, that was one of our best attended classes and, and you know, on stroking, and we're going to probably do one of those here in Boulder at that point in time. Uh, so let's see, what else do I have to cover? Uh, our sponsor, we want to thank tantradakini.org for their sponsorship as always. Uh, without them, we wouldn't be able to be here. And, and even though we've had the technical difficulties we had this evening, uh, you know, it's great to have them on board and helping support us. And hopefully we can get past some of those technical difficulties in the future and not have as many problems. Uh, but other than that, uh, I'm going to sign off for the evening. Appreciate everybody being here. Hope you got something out of this, learned something from it. Uh, text us a message. Uh, as our friend Reed Mahalko says, there's no such thing as criticism. It's only opportunities for us to excel in, in our quality and what it is we have to offer. So please let us know what you think, uh, good or bad. We want to make it so that it's valuable for you, and we're not wasting our time, not wasting your time, and uh, we have a lot to offer for you. So everybody, thanks a lot, and have a great night.